Welcome to Windows CMD tutorial number 3, General Tasks. In this video we will be continuing with the basics of the command line while learning how to perform some general tasks. Every video will have all slideshows and code available in the description. We have most of the theory of how commands work in the command line. So this video, and the next, is going to involve a lot of memorizing commands, so you know what tools you have at your disposal while working on the command line. Remember to keep in mind that commands follow the same pattern Command, Options, Arguments. Some commands, especially a few we cover in this video, take multiple arguments, like a source and destination path or file name. Ok, now that we understand how to move around our folders, let's learn how to create folders. Creating folders is done with the mkdir command, which stands for make directory. The command follows the pattern mkdir and then a folder name. Or we can create a folder inside another directory we are not currently in by specifying the directory backslash the folder name. Let's give this a shot and create a directory called cmd and put it in our C hard drive. We will use this folder for our practice from now on. Ok, so we'll open up our command prompt and we're going to cd dot dot cd dot dot and we're in the C hard drive. Now let's make our directory, so mk dir space and we're going to call it cmd. Alright, we've created our directory and there's been no errors that have popped up. And now if we type dir we can have a look and if we scroll up we'll see that we have the cmd directory. Cool. So let's uh, now try and move into that directory, so cd uh, cmd. So now we're in the CMD directory. Cool. With the power to create comes the power to destroy. So next, we need to learn how to remove directories that we no longer want. To remove a directory, we use the command rmdir, which stands for remove directory. The command follows an identical pattern to the make directory command. Let's have a go and create a folder in our CMD folder called temp, and then we'll remove it. OK. So we'll come back over. And we're going to create a folder, so mkdir, and we're going to call it temp. And we created it, there's no error messages. We can now type dir, and we can see our temp is currently now in here. Now let's try removing it. So we type rmdir for remove directory, and type temp, the name of the directory we want to remove. We hit enter, and no error, error messages. We type dir now we can see that there's no longer the temp directory. Cool. Now let's clear the screen, so CLS and get it ready for the next uh, use. Alright. Commonly, you may want to remove a folder that has files or folders inside it. However, Windows will not allow you to rmdir a folder that contains subdirectories or files. So for us to be able to remove the folder and everything, and I mean everything inside it, we must use the forward slash s option. We just follow our pattern to add the option in. rmdir space forward slash s space folder name. This will ask you, are you sure, before it confirms the removal. If you want to skip this, you can add the forward slash q option. Next, we may need to copy a file or files to another location on our computer, or even in the same folder but with a different name. Unfortunately, the trivial task of cut, copy and paste, we are so used to, is very intimidating for learners to the command line. Admittedly, cut and paste isn't as bad as copy. So first, we'll look at the move command for cut and paste. The move command is pretty straightforward. We use the move command to pick up a file and place it down somewhere else on the hard drive. The pattern takes two arguments, the source file to move, and the destination folder to place it in. The move command has one option, which is the forward slash capital Y, which forces overriding in the destination folder if there's a file with the same name. This is dangerous to use unless you are 100% certain it's something you want to do, as the overwritten file will be lost forever. Ok, let's create a text file and move it. So we'll come over to our command prompt. And let's create a directory, so mkdir, and we'll call it temp again. And now we want to create a file, so 
we're just going to create a text file. So you can either go and open up your browser, um, navigate to uh, navigate to your CMD folder, champ folder, and create a text file this way, new text file. Or alternatively, inside your command prompt, you can type notepad and then the file name. So let's do uh, text file dot txt and this will open up a new file so it says cannot find the text file dot txt file do you want to create a new file you say yes and it will create the file for you and you can put something in here so let's go hello this is a a test file we save this control s or file save and we can close that off now so now if we type dir we should see in here we have a text file dot txt Cool. So let's um, let's uh, move our text file. So currently the text file is in the CMD directory. So we're currently inside the CMD directory and we've created our text file here. Now let's say that was an accident. We want to move it back into the temp folder. We want to move it into the temp folder. So to do that we type move text file. Oops, text file dot txt, and then we space and then temp we want to move it into the temp folder so we press enter you can see it says one files moved now if we type dir we'll see it's no longer in this folder but if we change directory to temp and type dir we can see that it has been moved successfully into the temp directory cool so we'll just cd dot dot to go back all right and we'll clear the screen as well cls all right, now on to copying. Copying can be confusing. First of all, there is three commands, copy, xcopy, and robocopy. Which one should we use? Well, secondly, the differences between them. Copy will only copy files, plus it will not retry if the copy is interrupted or crashes. Xcopy will copy both files and folders, however, it will not retry. Finally, robocopy which stands for robust copy, which will copy both files and folders and will also retry if the copy is interrupted. There's quite a few more differences, but for now, we only need to know these. Let's start giving copy a go. Xcopy is deprecated, so let's focus on copy and robocopy. Let's try copying the text file we created earlier and making a copy in the same directory. Then we'll try our robocopy and copy the whole folder containing our text files. These commands work just like the move, but with more options available. Try looking at the help to see some of the cool things you can do. All right, so let's go over to our command prompt and we've got to move back into our temp directory as that's where our text file is. So we type dir, we can see our text file. Now let's make a copy. So let's type copy text file dot txt and space and the, the file we want to turn it into. So we're going to copy this file and we're going to rename it to text file 2.txt. Now if we hit enter, it just has one file copied. Now if we type dir, we can see we've got two text files of the same size, uh, text file and text file 2. Cool. Now let's uh, try copying the whole folder. So cd dot dot. So we're going to go back to our command uh, folder. And we're going to copy the whole temp folder and we'll call it temp2. So this time we need to use robocopy. So R-O-B-O -O, copy. No space. And then we do a space at the end. We're going to copy the temp folder and we're going to copy it to temp2. Now we hit enter. It'll show us the copy log. It shows us that it's just done a normal copy of all of the files inside the folder and it's created these new files and move them across to a new folder. Cool. So this is another good thing about Robocopy is it gives you a whole output of what, what it did. Okay, so let's now try dir and we can see we've got a temp2 folder. Let's try moving into that. So cd temp2 and if we have a look dir we can see we've got our text file and our text file2 which has been successfully copied. Cool. And we'll just CD back out and we'll clear the screen again. Awesome. 
Now that we know how to copy and move files and folders, renaming will be easy. To rename something, we use the rename command. This command works very similar to move and copy. It takes the source file to change and the destination file name. Deleting is quite easy to remember. The command is delete and it takes one argument, which is the file name. Alright, sometimes we may want to have a quick look at what's inside a file. There is an easy command that will output the contents of a file into our command line for us to read. We do this simply with the more command. We simply type more and then the file name. More is useful and makes quickly inspecting files a breeze. Once we are inside the more program, we can go down one line with the enter key, or we can go down one page with the spacebar key. If you want to know more about the more command, have a look at the help. Let's use the more command with one of our text files that we have. All right, so we'll come over to our command prompt and we'll move into the temp directory. And we're going to use the more command on our text file.txt. We enter, we can see it says, hello, this is a test file. And we can't really see the true power of more here because it's only a one line file. But we'll definitely see the more command used again. All right. Redirects are a crucial and powerful tool at your disposal in the command line. There are four main ones to remember. First, we have piping, which will place the output of the left command into the input of the right command. Second, we have input, which allows us to input data into a command on the left from a text file on the right. Third, we have output, which will allow us to place the output of a command on the left into the text file on the right. And finally, we have the append, which allows us to append the output of the command into the text file on the right. The dollar symbol has been added to show where commands or file names go. Let's give outputting a try. Outputting is probably the most commonly used one of the four. Input, on the other hand, is not very commonly used these days, but it's important to know it's there. Let's save the output of the dir command into a file. Appending works exactly the same, however adding on to the end of the existing file. Okay, so let's come across to the command prompt. And let's type dir output. And we'll put it into folder.txt. And this will create the file if it doesn't already exist. And we hit enter. Uh, we don't see the dir output that's um, contents to the command prompt. Instead, it's been all put into the file. So let's type more and the folder.txt file. Now, as you can see, we've got all of the output that would normally be in our command prompt has been put into this file. So that can be useful uh, for checking what's changed or just getting an, an overall look at what's in the current directory. Or even if you want to send your current directory listing to a friend. Okay. Sorting and using the piping character. The command line has a nice sort command ready to sort whatever you give it. By default, sort will output the results of the sort into the command line. Most of the time, it's useful to output the results into a file. This can be done with our output arrow or by using the sort command's inbuilt slash o option to output to a file. Sort can be nicely used with a pipe character that we learned about. The piping command is really useful with custom programs, but for general use, it's not often seen. For the example of piping, we will use it to sort the results of the dir command. Let's try it out. However, this time, let's go to our C hard drive as there'll be more folders to look at. Okay, so we come back over to our command prompt and we'll type cd dot dot cd dot dot. Okay, now we want to sort our dir command. So if we type dir space pipe, which is the key above your enter key while holding shift, it kind of looks like a big uh, bar, space, and then the sort command. And when we hit enter, we can see that it's sorted our dir, our dir command by the day in our day, month, year. So it starts here, 1st, 3rd, 5th, 7th, 10th, 11, 14, 15, 16, etc. And sorted it that way. Cool. And we'll just clear the screen, so CLS. 
Finally, let's talk about wildcards. Wildcards are really useful. They allow us to select certain files based on a pattern. This is usually easier to get an understanding of by looking at an example. So for example, dir space star dot text will list all of the files in the current directory with the file extension dot txt. We can also use it to construct more complex wildcards. For example, dir space star zero one star dot star. This will list all of the files that contain a zero one in the file name. It's called a wildcard because you don't know what characters will be in that space. If you should only want a wildcard as a single character, you can use the question mark instead of the star. Okay, let's give it a quick shot. Also, I should mention that wildcards will work with most commands in the command line. Okay, so if we come over to the command line, and we can type dir, so we're going to list everything in the directory. However, we're going to give it uh, sdl star. So I know that I've got some folders that start with sdl in this uh, hard drive. So if I hit dir space sdl star, it'll search for all of the things in the directory that start with sdl. And whatever comes after sdl, it doesn't matter, just as long as it has sdl starting. And if we hit enter. We can see that I've got a folder called SDL2 and I've got a folder that's SDL2 image and also an SDL2 mixer. So that's a quick way to cut down your searches inside a directory. Okay, so let's give it another shot. Uh, we're going to do dir and we'll do star.txt this time. So this will list all of the txt files in this current directory no matter what name it has. So if I hit enter, you can see that I've got a bunch of EULA uh, TXTs in this folder. Nine of them to be exact. Okay. I can also do, if I don't know uh, how to properly spell, say, program files, I could type uh, dir uh, pro star, and that'll almost finish it off for me, and I'll be able to see, oh, that's how it's spelled. It'll list my program files and my program files x86. So you can use it to finish things for you, which is very, very nice. Um, yeah, alternatively, uh, if you didn't know how to spell program files, you can usually hit tab, and tab will fix it to the closest thing it can find first. So, as you can see, when I typed pro to start with, for program files, pro, and then typed, uh, hit the tab key, it finished it for me as program files. And it added in the quotes, because there's a space in the folder name. And if I hit enter here, It'll list everything inside the program files folder. Cool. So we can clear the screen, CLS. Okay, that's the main general skills and tasks that you'll want to do on the command line. If I was to cover every command, we would be here for a very long time. However, I believe that with the skills and commands you've learned in this video, the use of other commands will be as simple as looking it up on Google or reading its usage. So for now, let's move on. The next thing we'll be looking at is using some of the networking tools available. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments and I'll try to answer it as best as possible. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.